Alrighty guys, welcome in to another AFK Journey video. Today we are going to be looking at some gameplay that I did on Honor Duel. I am currently rank 1, so I wanted to share my experience with you guys in this game mode. First and foremost, when you first start, there are these relics that you want to kind of base your team off of. I love to go play random, so I usually go that unless it's just like a busted relic. Here we ended up getting the exact relic that I love to play, which is pretty funny. It's a Wilder relic that makes uh, Laika just do some pretty insane damage later on. And usually you want to go for an item on her that is uh, increased damage that stops her from using her ultimate. Uh, we do end up getting it later on. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and take a look at some of the gameplay, and I'm going to explain why I do certain things, uh, the synergies that I choose, and why I take certain paths on like setting things in the shop and re-rolling at certain points and stuff like that. So obviously when you're first starting, you want to try to get five characters as fast as possible. My goal usually on the first round is to get five characters and two items. Unfortunately, we didn't get the items on this first round, which is okay. Sometimes your synergy is good enough to just pop off and do enough damage to survive and take out the enemies. On this one right here, um, I believe that we had enough uh, synergy of the Wilder to have enough damage and everything to sustain. I don't remember exactly. We did lose two rounds. I don't remember exactly which two rounds it is. But basically, the whole point of this team is to get your tank tanky enough to survive until uh, Hewen can do her first heal. And then it's pretty much good to go at that point. Uh, Parissa is kind of the main carry of this, even though we have the relic, obviously, for Laika. Uh, Parissa, you'll see at the end how freaking crazy she gets if you have the right items and synergy and everything on her. I don't like taking uh, Brian uh, into like late game. So I believe right here we end up getting lucky, get two legendaries on turn two. And then we also went with the effect to make the rearmost hero just have 50% more attack damage, which is great because we have two backline heroes that are really strong, which is going to be Laika and Parissa. Here I was just locking some items and then just refreshing once to see if I can get some more characters. I was debating whether or not to like actually lock him and save him for the next round. But I think I decided against it because I knew I wasn't going to take him into late game. I kind of have a team for the Wilders that I like to run. I feel like their synergy is really well. Um, it, it works really well later on and, and you guys will see that. But... This arena happens to be actually one of my favorites besides just the straight up one with no obstacles at all for this team because it really allows your backline units to just start popping off and have enough time to get their ults up. And truly, you only need one or two ults from Parissa for it to end it. Uh, this one right here, they had two tanks and a healer. Uh, out right at the beginning so I was kind to put Laika in the very back because I didn't have the item on Parissa yet to actually make her pop off and do the ult damage so I wasn't really worried about her uh, having that buff but we have Laika here as you can see she's just going crazy in the back her ultimate is like subpar honestly in my opinion I never get any items that like boost up her ult I don't really like it uh, not in this game mode at least but it does work out in some scenarios. Obviously, if you get that heal off, it, it makes a huge uh, difference when it comes to things. Here, you see Parissa just pop like three people all at once with her ult. She's, she's so strong, even without items, just in that legendary state, uh, that it was pretty much a guaranteed victory as soon as uh, Eron does his ult. And his ult is like a whirlwind that sucks everyone in together all at once. So it's a pretty strong synergy between those two. Here we get very lucky and we end up grabbing our tank that goes with our synergy. So at this point we have our full synergy of team. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of the characters that we know we're not gonna use. So that way we can just clear up some space and not have to worry about making any mistakes. We grab the three items so that way we can get those on our characters. This one uh, that I put on uh, Eron is for close range. There I put the attack speed. 
I was thinking, oh, do I want to have the attack speed on her or do I want to have it on the healer? I did decide to go with the healer because I just wanted her to get her heal up faster. Sustainability is very important with this team because if you can sustain long enough for uh, Parissa to get her ultimate off a couple of times, it's usually GG. Now, on this arena right here, I like to put characters in a certain pattern to where I can make a decision later on on which side I want to defend. So I kind of split it out perfectly here. We still want Laika to be in the very back regardless because her most of her damage is just coming from auto attacks. So we wanted to guarantee that she would be in the back. Uh, this could be one of the rounds that I ended up losing. I believe uh, earlier on, Vala does so much freaking damage in this game mode. And she has the ultimate bonus uh, damage item. And they all have items. So it's five items versus the three that we have. Those items make a huge difference. And I think here is the one where I believe we, we get taken out on this round. If I'm not mistaken. If not, it's the next one. We'll see. I don't I don't remember exactly which round it was. Yeah, okay, yeah. Seth was just popping off this round. He was going crazy on the other team, which was wild because he only had a, a three synergy, and the item that he had was not that great. So I was really confused. I was actually like, what the hell was going on with this? But apparently he wanted to destroy my team, so he did, which was no problem at all because we're one apple down, and we're going good. We got two wins in. We get this one right here, which gives us another two Parissas and another healer. We lock that in. So here, I like to check the items, see which ones we have. And obviously, we're going to lock all three of those, if you can guess, on the board. And we are going to pick up something that is freaking insane for healers. This one right here, we don't care about doing damage. So it allows them to cast their ult instantly. So obviously, we already know who that's going on. This one is going to go on Hewin because if we have her ult up instantly, it means that we're just healing automatically. I accidentally misclicked uh, and switched them over so that way they were in the right spots. And we start getting um, a little bit tougher opponents now because we're into the third round. Uh, fourth round, I'm sorry. We're into the fourth round. We lost the third one. Into the fourth round, we are going to see more legendaries and stuff out there. And we will see people starting to, uh, the other teams starting to synergize with more items. We are still lacking our fifth item. But the healing item on her or this item that allows her to use her ult instantly in the start of battle is pretty huge because she has an AoE ult that covers the entire team. So basically what that means is... From the beginning of battle, we have a sustainability that is going on on the team. Now, the Graveborn just so happens to be the perfect counter to my team if it is built correctly and if there's items on them correctly. So we'll go ahead and see if this is a round that we take or this is a round that we lose. Yeah, see that ult just goes off instantly and it just makes for such a huge difference. Granny gets her ult off. She's freaking tanking everything. Freaking Eron gets his ult off. We suck everyone in together. Pause. We pull everyone in together <laughs> and then we just allow them to pop off. Sometimes I like to take a look at the uh, damage to see who does the most. And there you go. Boom. With that item that she has is not even good yet. I think she's just using the attack speed, but it allowed her, look at this. This shop was crazy, man. I was getting so many good hits with this shop. We ended up getting another Parissa. We only need one more to get her mythic already early on in the game, which is huge. Here, I knew I couldn't buy all three of those. So I was kind of just doing the math in my head. I was like, at least let me get them to legendary here. We'll lock that other one. End up locking that uh, armor as well, because that is a good armor to have earlier on here i like to clear out the inventory so i don't just have pointless heroes uh that i'm not going to use i know the ones that i'm focused on boom we lock it we get the last parissa right there that was huge i, I was actually pretty excited about that because <laughs> a mythic parissa early on is absolutely bonkers and i'm almost positive the next round after this or one more round after this we get the epic item that just allows her damage to start ramping up insane. Same method here. Uh, we do pretty much the same layout. It's the same uh, same banner or uh, same arena. 
So it's kind of the same option. We already know we want to put her in the back, so we do that already. Now we're just making a decision uh, which side do we want to go on and commit to. Obviously, we want to go to the right side because they threw all those units, and then we want to have them protected back there. The Lightbringer team is very strong if they have um, the girl on the horse. They ended up not having her. I keep forgetting her name, and I apologize. They did not have her on this, so I felt pretty confident that the uh, synergy that we had already was going to be good enough to go ahead and take everyone out. Here you can see we're kind of trading equally. We get this ult off. He gets his ult off. And it kind of pulls everyone in together. But the problem here is their archer right there in the back, she moves around. And she does crazy burst damage with the item that she has. Our uh, Laika was just not up to par yet. I don't think she even has an item equipped yet, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she still didn't have an item equipped. So now we know 100% that we got our mythic. And we should be good to go. I decided, okay, I only need 35 to buy both of those. Let me do a reroll or two. We'll go ahead and lock in this other Leica. She won't boost up anything right away. So it's no point in buying her. I'm not getting her to legendary with that. We also get the granny. So we lock that in. Now we are just waiting to see if we get any item that does any difference in damage for us. We're really hunting right now for Parissa's item. Uh, but I decided to buy uh, those characters. Not sure why I unlocked him, uh, to be honest, but I did. He was already legendary, so I was like, ah, one of them is, one of them is good enough for now. I think we reroll one more time. And we don't really get anything. And then boom, that's the item I was hunting for right there. So we end up getting it. We go ahead and lock the uh, Wilder in after we switch this item over. And then we get Laika, her item finally. She is all equipped and ready to go. And as you will see in this next round, it gets a pretty... It starts getting pretty silly. Like her damage starts getting pretty insane. Um, she is like the equivalent to um vala i feel on an aoe level of the amount of damage that she outputs this arena is pretty tricky uh there's a couple things that you can do with this now because i was i was thinking some stuff right here and i was like okay how do i want to do this i already know that i'm getting the heal off there's only three spots on this right side so he should be enough uh, to tank at least enough of the damage and these first couple of rounds I forgot that my um, or the first couple of rounds right now after this I forgot that my relic uh, was more beneficial to uh, Leica so I kept putting Parissa in the back and then I was like oh I need to switch that um, so if you see the next couple of rounds I will end up doing that it gives her more of a bonus here we get everyone together Parissa does her ult they don't exist anymore and they're all gone she <laughs> if you've seen that damage right there then you understand it was pretty crazy um yeah it gets pretty silly now the goal the goal at this point since we have our main carry and we know she's going to be doing the output of damage right now we're just fishing to get our tank to survive we're also fishing fishing for specific items that give um ewin uh, not even, I'm sorry, that gives um, Granny some a, a little bit more survivability because right now she has the base. We did end up picking up that other item. I didn't put it on yet, but I think I'm still fishing for one more copy of her. I was like, okay, let me put that on her real quick before I forget. And basically what I wanted to do was fish for one more copy of uh, Granny. I ended up putting that on Laika because she got slapped the round before that. So I was like, okay, I want her to survive a little bit longer. That was kind of embarrassing for her. She's she's one of the carries and she got deleted instantly. So my goal was to make her survive. That's why I put the armor on her. It does nothing to her damage. It just allows her to survive a little bit longer. Here, I had the game plan set up. I knew I wanted to protect the healer. So healer and the tank usually go out in the first point. But I was like, you know what? 
let me go ahead and set up my damage dealers and then I can decide which side uh, the tank needs to go on based off of what we put out already and what they put out. Here again, I, I messed up again and, and put Leica in the wrong position. Truly because she's not putting out any damage with that um, item that she has. She's just there kind of to survive and hope that she gets jumped on by a rogue. I was like, if they have a rogue, I hope it jumps on her. That's why I put her in that position. Again, here, the game plan is to survive long enough for Parissa to get her ult off and um, for Ewin to get his ult off to kind of center or Erion to get his ult off to synergize together. As you see there, she just deleted everyone again. The most annoying character is that Graveborn dude right there. The one that jumps from tombstone to tombstone. He's so annoying if he's built well and you have synergy around him with a good relic. But this team actually... Uh, it goes perfectly against him, but it's not very good against Graveborn as a whole if they have a whole five uh, slot with um, the melee character, the tank, uh, Thorin, and um, the girl who I think her name is uh, Catherine, uh, the one who does the ice. She's pretty annoying. Here we get the perfect item. That's what I was looking for for Leica. I knew I wanted to get it, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to lock it real quick. We'll see what we can get out of here. We only need 40 to grab it. We have 106 to go. So let's go ahead and fish for some more characters. We really need our granny to get up. And uh, it's kind of taken forever to do that. Here I was kind of looking between two items. Like which one did I want to do? Maybe I wanted to put that on another character. But I believe I decided against it. I ended up not buying it. So right there that that bow is good earlier on if we would have got it like on round four but right now that sword is just so much better so we end up getting the granny uh having the tank not legendary that quick was pretty rough but we got lucky because we got a mythic of our damage dealer so she didn't have to ult but one or two times for us to finish the match so granny only needed to survive the initial ult because we would have gotten rid of two at least one or two characters on the first uh ult that um parissa does so we kind of got lucky getting that mythic earlier on uh but you have to re-roll with strategy like think in your mind what you're fishing for you don't know this the first time you play this game so it or this game mode so it's good to play a couple ones don't get discouraged if you lose there's still matches that i do where i don't even win a single round because it's just unlucky in the shop there is rng to this as well it's not just all 100 percent strategy so play around with different comps and different items but i will tell you for like bursty characters the items that you see me putting on parissa is good for every single mage it's good for every single bursty character in the game uh in this mode so 100% fish for those. They go in tiers, the blue, the purple, and the yellow. So always fish for the blue first if you have a burst. And then obviously wait till you can upgrade to the purple. And uh, so on and so forth. So here, let's see if I, I remember. I still don't remember <laughs> the relic is that. But it's been working out. It's, it's not a problem. Here I got kind of scared because I was like, man, they already got two mythics over there. But the item on the healer is garbage, and my Parissa just does so much damage. They're all stacked up already, so I was like, okay, at this point, I know this is going to be a quick delete. It's a mirror match. All we need is one ult from Parissa, and I'm pretty sure this game is over. No one has, um, like, a revive or invulnerability. Delete it, two of them. Two of them are at very low health, so on and so forth, pretty much the gist of this. The synergy of the teams that I would recommend is every single team has a good synergy. Uh, the focus on the Wilders, obviously, is going to be Leica or Parissa. If you end up getting um, the other dude that has the Eagle, he's pretty good, too, if you get unlucky and don't get Parissa or Leica. He's like a last case kind of scenario in my book. He's great in the normal game, but in this one, I feel like he just doesn't output enough damage quick enough to where a lot of these teams have really good healers later on. So you're struggling with that. And bursty characters seem to do like pretty much the best in this game mode. 
whenever it comes to like mages or hunters uh, or rangers, those do the best in this game mode. The Graveborn team, you want to basically get your um, either your rogue, the rogue girl up. You want to get your warrior up or you want to get the uh, dude who jumps around from the gravestones up. Those are the three kind of carries for that. Uh, Cecia doesn't haven't found any relic that really makes her pop off. So I usually end up skipping her. There is some great items that I've seen uh, that allow her to kind of um, just get in the mix a little bit better. That's when I remembered. I was like, you know what? Why am I doing this? Let our Leica do some damage. And I think I look at the damage meter after this one as well, just to make sure. Again, they got some good mythics, but we're protecting, getting everything out there. We already know at this point that the uh, Parissa ult is a one or two two shot. So that way we know we'll be good to go if she can get the ult off. Here I was a little worried because her heal didn't come out instantly. She got stunned, but everything kind of turned out good in the end. Once you get uh, him right here, Aaron, to his mythic form, it just gets silly, man. It, it just gets unfair because he uses his ult instantly and it's a full screen and it pulls everyone right at the start of battle. So with this synergy, we have a heal going off instantly. We have his ult going off instantly that allows him to pull everyone in together, get Parissa ready to use her ult, and it just annihilates them. I'm telling you, it's so silly. Like this... This round is great, but the next round you're going to see after that is hilarious. The very last round where everyone's built, everyone's mythic and everything like that. It's freaking hilarious. But if you guys have any questions about um, Honor Duel or, you know, if you're having a hard time uh, with certain team comps and everything, I, I would suggest watching back through this video and kind of giving yourself the pointers that I've went through through this video and talking about like the decisions that I've made and everything. Because I feel like it, it goes with every single team comp. This one was a wilder. I will do a full video. I probably won't do a comment commentating on every single video, but I will upload a full video of a full team comp of every faction that way you can kind of see my synergy behind them, which characters I'm choosing, the items I'm choosing and everything like that on which characters that they go with. Uh, that way you guys can have an idea how to go up in the leaderboards and everything if you're interested in going up there. I think on, on the server that I'm on, um, it's a decent amount of people that have been grinding it. Uh, I have a couple friends that have also started this game. I believe they got on different servers than me. And they took pictures of like their leaderboards and everything for Honor Duel. And they started the same day, first day that it came out. But they got in different servers. And I, I see that Honor Duel is not played as much in those other servers. Or people are just having a hard time getting uh, full victories. Because the, the more trophies that you get, like if you get a perfect victory with all three apples and all trophies, like you don't lose a single round. Maximum I've got was 44 points for just one victory, which is pretty huge. Um, if you lose within the first three trophies or four trophies, I believe you lose points. If you get to the fifth trophy, you get like two points, six, you get like four or five, seventh trophy, you get like 10 and then it's like 20 or like 15 or 20 and then 30 and then the 40, I think 40 and then 44. And then it also determines how many, um, lives that you lost throughout the, the go as well. But I've had. I would say uh, this is day three uh, that I was actually like grinding it. And in those three days, I've done maybe 40 matches because I've used the gold to refresh all 10, uh, all three days that I've played. I'd say I've gotten six like flawless victories already um, using different synergies and everything like that. This one was not a flawless victory, obviously, because we lost two rounds. But we do end up winning everything and getting a pretty good chunk of uh, points to push us up a little bit further in the leaderboard. This was huge. Uh, getting that relic all the way to the two star, um, it, it may seem like, you know, inconsequential at this point, but it does make a huge difference. That item right there, uh, you will see that's her best in slot. Like, 
getting that almost I 100% have never lost a game if I have her mythic and I have that item on her just I guarantee you 100% you'll see right here this this is the last match uh, thank you if you've watched this entire video I know it's very long these this honor duel does take a good you know 25 to 30 minutes uh, and I was trying to go a little bit slower clicking through things so that way I could talk about them in the video afterwards. I recorded a bunch of different versions of this, but I, a couple of them I got unlucky in the shop. And then I was trying to do some where I was talking and recording it at the same time. And I was not paying attention to the game fully. So I was making a lot of mistakes and I was like, you know what, let me just record the video and then go over and we can talk about it after I put everything uh, up or after I do everything. Here we have, I already knew that this was kind of GG because they don't have a full five synergy. So they're not getting the full uh, amount. They have a four one, which you see this dude ults. We get our heal off. We're sustained. Parissa's building up and good night. Everyone's gone. <laughs> the fools got deleted. Here we'll take a look at the damage and everyone did their part. All the damage dealers. You don't need to have damage on the uh, healer. She just needs the heal or they just need to heal whoever it is. So we got 40 points on that one. If we would have had those other two, those two apples would have been two and two. Here we're at 607 points. We are ranked one. We're a good hundred points above second place on this one. So that means they got to get three flawless victories. Anyways, guys, thank y'all so much for stopping by. Please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see y'all in the next video.